like hunting, fishing, and the great outdoors, then come along today with Dave Embry in search of the world's greatest outdoor adventures. You'll go all over the world, from Alaska to South America, Canada to Mexico, in search of the most elusive and dangerous game in the world. This is Dave Embry's Adventures in the Wild. Thank you, big boy. Hi, I'm Dave Embry. Welcome to another exciting episode of Adventures in the Wild. Today we're with the Nunley Brothers out on the Coyote Ranch. We've got a wildlife management uh, expert here, Bill Morrow. We're out of, uh, well, about 70 miles from Mexico, out of Sabinal, Texas. That's about 60 miles west of San Antonio. And we're down here to do a little bit of bass fishing today. We're going to show you a little bit about how to fish this structure and what's going on, but that's really not what we're here, what we're here about today. We're going to give you a little bit of hints of it. But the biggest thing we're doing here today is to catch some big bass. And this place is known for its big bass. If you don't believe us, you just watch. We're going to show you some tough ones. Where's he at, Bill? Sir? Where's he at? <laughs> He's right over right there. there. <laughs> yeah. This is the one you were fishing for. This is the one you told me to cast over there. This is what you call it takes fishing a, for long trip bass. <laughs> and this is Dave's only fish all day long that he caught himself right here. I swear, this sucker just hatched out of the egg now, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> That is, that is just a little It is over a pretty fish. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah beautiful they're beautiful. Fish. Just gorgeous fish. This is some pretty water in here for him, too. Go ahead, fella. He says, whew. <laughs> <laughs> he says, oh, boy. <laughs> Thank Lordy. I'm going to church on Sunday. Moo. Are we in Texas or what? Moo. Santa Gertrude's cattle. <laughs> You do much fly rod fishing down here for, for bass? Boy, I do. Whenever I get a chance, I, I do it for fun. Now, I, need, I don't really do that much fishing on this particular operation. I usually don't hunt or fish on the places that the places I manage. you bring clients into, yeah. But when I bring clients and they want to fly fish, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fly fishing, what, what, what should we use if you come up and do some fly fishing for bass? I'm generally probably, what, a, maybe an eight or nine rod, size eight or nine? Yeah, and... probably nine foot rod. I, you know, the, the longer the better. You want to be able to whip that out there, you're going to have a, a pretty heavy plug, as heavy a plug as you'll ever use on that deal. So you want to have a pretty heavy plug on there, or popper. So you're saying if I cast right over there, I'm going to catch the gargo of the bass. I That's repeat, right. right? Ed McMahon. Now, how many casts am I going to have to make? Uh, just the one that you hook him on is all that you need. <laughs> That's the only one. Just one that counts. Yeah, the wind's picking up a little bit out here. Or like with all all good bass fishing, these guys like cover. Got a little point coming through here, a lot of weedy stuff. You got him? You got him? Jeez. No, I missed him. Oh, scared me to death. My worm hit the end of the rod. I thought <laughs> <laughs> I was watching you. Hope well, he was close. He was he was he was working me over just a little bit. <laughs> thought you had that. Oh. Well, 14 we pounder, isn't what we're looking for, a 14? And yeah, I'm going for a 14. After your 13, I have to go something. <laughs> Record out here is, what did you say, 13.8, I think? Uh, let's see, yep, 13.8. Woo! The world record bass, unless something's come along since the last book I've got, but the record book, world record book bass, was 22 pounds and four ounces caught back in 1932 in Georgia. We, in our survey, we found some 15s out here. We have not right? brought them to boat. We've got them. What, what does it take to make a good bass? <sighs> it takes three things, really. Same thing it does to make a good trophy buck. It takes genetics, age, and nutrition. You know, he's got to have all those three things. Right. If you've got those two things, three things, he'll be a darn good bass for you. Well, when you manage these lakes up here like you do, I know you're being a degreed wildlife biologist like you are, and you run Wildlife Management Inc., right? Yes, sir. You manage a lot of different ranches and stuff down through here. I do. I manage for fish and wildlife. Two of my degrees are in fisheries and wildlife. Mm -hmm. So, Well, uh, I guess one of the things is just the same thing as important in wildlife management as in fish management is that you can't let the population get too high, right? No, sir, you can't. As a matter of fact, we've got a program right now. Our waters are going down a little bit. I don't know if you heard about it, but Texas is in a drought. <laughs> yeah, when I was born, I think I remember my mama reading that out of the paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, the drought in Texas starts the day the, the rain ends. I've said that to you before. But uh, what we're doing right now is we've set up a slot limit. We're taking out what we consider to be our smaller age class bass. Mm -hmm. Populations of bass are built upon, and, and most populations of species are built upon pyramids. You have more, uh, more at the young than you do at the top. So we right. remove a bunch of the young 
to relieve that pressure. We want to keep our trophies because that's what people really get sure, excited sure. about. So we're that's trying cool. to, to really increase our, our population makeup, make it a little bit better because we are cutting down on the area that we have available for forage. You want more big bass. You bet. That is the name of the game. More big bass. The most quality bass that you can have. And I can handle one more big bass. I've caught more big bass today than in my entire life, and I want one more. You just want enough. <laughs> and you know what the definition of enough is, don't you? I give up. That's just one more. <laughs> just one more. Well, I'm going to catch him because I, I drifted us past that place where it's good. The only place on the whole tank. You got your plug in it, right? Uh-huh. Well, you think, no, you switched over to a worm, didn't you? Yeah, After I, I caught did. That big I, one. Uh, I did. I thought it was unfair advantage for me to use a, a plug and not catch anything for you being using worms and catching That's right. fish. Gave me that worm. There it is. Oh, I missed that sucker. No, I mean, I was hung. <laughs> Where was it? <laughs> it just got caught on the weeds. just wound the worms off the hook. Uh-huh. I got you. I got you. Yes, sir. Somewhere out there, there's a bass with my name on it. You'll see him when never... you catch him. You run on the side of him and say, B-I-L-L. <laughs> Mr. Bill. Well, it's the Nunley Brothers Ranch. Got a pretty good looking outfit up here. Yeah, they do a lot to take care of their place. Well, it takes a lot, you know. And you really do have to take your hats off to, the, to Texas and for the, probably the wildlife management in Texas has been Okay, this one's, on, this one's on here. This one's on here now. I tell you, the management of Texas is dead gum good. Where was that? Where was that fish? Come on up here. He's going to try to come up. He's in the state of Texas, and here he comes. <laughs> Get All right, look at that boy go. That's a nice fish, Get him back baby. up here. Come on back up. That's a good one. That's come a on, nice boy, you can spit this thing out and give me a look try. Him, look at him look bash. Him. That's a good fight in Texas bass. Yeehaw. Yeah, you call this a Texas bass. Yeah, hey, look come at that. back. Aren't you uh -huh. going to come back? You're not giving up yet, are you? He's real feisty. <laughs> he just wants to get he's up here and with a little water. Oh, That's look at him. Oh, he's going. Uh -huh. now, what is a Texas bass? Well, a Texas bass, just a little bit. You know, we have really two types of bass on this place, or a large amount of bass. We have the Florida and the Texas. And then I guess we have a third kind we call the hybrid. Uh -huh. Now, all we've had in this one, and we did electrophoresis on it, or, or uh, electronically looked at the genetics, these are, are Texas bass, pure Texas strain, good bass, good bass. That's the little, the little ones in the Texas bass. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's a gorgeous bass, no matter what kind of bass it is. Isn't that beautiful? But they, tend to, they seem to fight a little bit better, at least here, Ooh. than the Florida's do. He's now that, with my Yeah, that's the way you, uh, that's your editing <laughs> thumb right there that he's getting at. <laughs> you know, was, he, was he right over there? Like was he right over there? No, no, he was, he was over there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I like to throw my worm dinner sometimes and let it sit there. Just give it a little bit of jiggle every once in a while. You know, you'd be surprised about how that happens. That's that's called jigging, jigging, and we do that quite a bit here very successfully. If I didn't have this bird nest wrapped around this particular reel, which I borrowed, <laughs> Yeah, that's what always happens, isn't it? <laughs> well, you heard the story about the old guy who was catching all the fish down at the local pond. Right by the, had to go right past the game warden's house every day to get down to down this pond that he fished at. Every day he'd come back in the evening and have his big old sling, stringer full of fish draped over his shoulder. And the game warden came out there one day and says, John Henry says, how in the world are you catching all those fish? He said, I've been out here and I've fished this pond for years and years. I never caught fish like that. John Henry never was one a man of very, very many words, and he's looked at the game warden and says, you want to go with me tomorrow? He says, yeah, you might. just be here at 6. So he leaves. Next morning, the game warden probably got his rod and reels and his tackle boxes, and he's standing there by the road waiting for the old Roy to show up, and old Roy shows up, sure enough, at 6 o'clock in the morning. Game warden looks at him and says, you ready to go? Says, yep, come on. So they go on down there to get the boat off the bank, and they load their stuff all up, putting all the tackle boxes and rod and reels of the game boarders in there and get out there in the lake and the old game boarders rigging up his line and getting ready to go and looks over at old Roy and says, well, Roy, where's your fishing pole at? And old Roy just opens the box up, grabs a stick of dynamite, lights it, throws it in the pond. 
kaboom, all these fish are coming up, and he's always out there scooping these fish up with a net right and left. We got this one and got that, and the game warden, he is jumping up and down. He says, I can't believe you did that, Roy. He says, that's illegal. That's against the law. You can't dynamite these, these fish out of this pond like that. And he's screaming and yelling, and Roy's still scooping the fish up, throwing them in the boat. Game warden, he's still, he's, Roy, I'm going to have to arrest you. I can't believe you did that, my friend. Oh, my God, why don't Roy? And he's just, just raving and carrying on. Roy's still scooping the fish up. The game warden's sitting there screaming and yelling. Finally, Roy throws the net down the bottom of the boat, reaches the tackle box, grabs another stick of dynamite, lights it, and sticks it in the game warden's hands. Are you going to talk or fish? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what part of the country Roy's from. <laughs> That's that DuPont spinner country. <laughs> Oh, there he is. There oh, he is. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Get the bag back. I'll get the dude. He was straight down on the boat. Don't worry me, Lord. Oh, look at another one of these holes. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I'm getting to the point where, where is, what's this little puny thing doing on here? <laughs> that's Woo bait. We save him for life. Oh, hey, Lord. Him. Boy, I got him hooked good, too. Look at him. Get oh, that's another there. female. Jeez. She's all right. Get loose. Get loose. Come on, baby. Turn loose. Yeah, you got him. You got him. No. There you go. You have any small mass bass in this area at all? No, no small mouth here. Uh, we've got some stripers in this tank. Get up right? about hybrid stripers. Yeah, they don't breed. They get up about 12 pounds. They're nice. Ooh, what a nice fish. fish! Look at that fish. That's a nice what, four or five pounder? Oh yes, sir. I go yes. five. Ooh, that's a good fish. He's a nice fish. Good one. We have to nice put him back. Fish. Yeah, well. And it's beautiful. Look at that. I was gonna say that's probably a four-year-old <laughs> fish, five-year-old fish, something like that. Put him that. back in the water and for a minute. I wanna, I wanna show something to the people. A lot of times it's harder to determine really the difference between a large mouth. A lot of people probably wouldn't even know the difference if they caught them in some places. But, of course, by the size, of course, you see the size of the mouth here. But if you look, also, if you can come in on the camera, come in on the mouth here pretty tight, you see that the jawline will typically come back back as far as the eyes or a little bit further, right? Sure. And the small mouth, usually the jaw will come up a little further. And of course, you got a continuation of the dorsal fins in right. one versus the other. And, and uh, uh, large mouth typically has a more row of stripes down the center here of his body, whereas the uh, small mouth might have him going in the opposite direction, up and down like that. That's nice a nice fish. fish. Go back, honey, grow up some more. By the standards of the Coyote Ranch, you don't make the boat. There you go. <laughs> she ain't much, but Woo. she's all we got. That's it. Oh, fantastic. Let's do it some more. Let's just do it once, man. Okay. <laughs> Nice fish. Yee, this is a what? A Texas bass? That's a Texas. We're looking to fight, man. No, I'm get serious. Get him, boy. Get him. The Let's Texas go. bass. There he goes. The Texas subspecies of the northern <laughs> bass. See that? Did you see him jump yeah. up and throw it right back at me? That's great. Yeehaw. That's great. That's all right, Phil. I'm going to get your brother. That's what we call our rodeo brother. bass. Your rodeo bass. All right. How you call it down here in Texas? Rodeo or rodeo? Uh, rodeo. They, oh. I think they call it rodeo in Oklahoma. In L.A.? <laughs> this is right. This is what you call some good structure, my man. Yeah, we've got a real nice little drop off right here. Uh, the fish seem to congregate right around it, and we just work them over. I never catch anything, but everybody else does. A little bit windy up here today. Just stay still. Come on in here, fella. Boy, it could be a prettier day. A little bit warm. Woo. These bass generally like, what, about 68, 72 degrees nationwide as a whole on the average. You yeah, you to, bet. Try to find that, that temperature down to where you find that 68 to uh, 72 degree range. Really, 65 to 75 is a good range. Sure. Good all-around range. But I guess the thing that's, that is good about a largemouth bass is that it's so adaptable. It's right to get to the wildlife is a lot like a white-tailed deer. I guess he's so uh, adaptable to his environment that the white-tailed deer has learned to, to live right around with man. It's the same thing with a, with a, a bass. Large-mouth bass can pretty much adapt to any extremes. You know, we're down here uh, about 70 miles from the Mexican border, you know, real close, 60 miles west of San Antonio, Sabino, Texas. And this is uh, pretty far south. And water temperature we measure while ago is about 88 degrees. And we're not running much more than about, oh, five to seven feet deep, so many places up for a couple of drop-offs. And the temperature's a little bit higher, but these bass here have learned to do that. They've learned to adapt, right? You bet. Yeah, that's the, that's the interesting thing about them. And, 
It's sort of like you can run, but you can't hide. You're going to be in hot water yeah. if you're in this tank. You're going to be in, in fairly warm water, and they are, and they're doing real well. Yeah. We've got nine and a half, ten pound bass in here. Yeah. So you couldn't take a northern pike or a walleye or a muskie and take them down here and put them in this water. He wouldn't survive. But a whitetail can live up in uh, lakes in Minnesota as well as he lives down in lakes in uh, Mexico. Sure. You get a you get a northern bass, and that's why they're called northern bass. They'll they can adapt. They'll be able to do that. Now, we usually have a little bit larger bass down here than they have up there, and the primary reason is we have a longer growing season. Yeah. We can produce more forage species, things like that. There Thanks there is. Uh, oh, boy. you quit that? I'm getting... <laughs> I'm going to go to well, a worm look, in just a second. Well, look, now, now, you want to see what happened? He stole my worm. See that? It's gone. There's no respect. Why didn't you I'm, give me a worm with only one hook? I'm getting no respect. <laughs> I need a worm with two hooks in it. <laughs> He was, he was, uh, this, this, oh, this, this that bass, bass, that was, that was God, God Godzilla the bass. See, that's that's who that was, Gorgo. That's how he was, yeah. Gorgo the bass. On the plane on the way home tonight, I'll tell that guy sitting in the seat next to me how big he was. You say, you tell him that big and you're going to have a date. <laughs> of course, when I tell that story, he won't even, uh, he will not have even gotten away. <laughs> I got him, right, I released him. <laughs> well, you got some pictures to prove that. <laughs> that's right, I can't lie about that one. Camera was on. I may have to go deep on this deal. Well, I tell you, I, it's where that drop off is right through here. Mm -hmm. well, these fish like these uh, drop offs. They like uh, to get around to where that edge of a point, or uh, if you've got a bank that's coming down steeply, fish that fish that big drop off. I like to fish these worms. Just let them go down. Boy, I thought that. Hey, you like worm fishing about the best, Bill? Well, in this tank, sometimes it is. Dave, we've got, uh, we catch our better fish on worm fishing. Occasionally, we'll catch them on spinner baits, but mainly the worm fishing is a, is a nice, slow fishing. And it's, yeah. it's one that just turns up for real good results. Ah, jeez. Hey, got All a little right. weight to it. Got a little weight to it. Get in there. Tight this dragon. All right. Woo, come on in here. Uh, mama. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Come on up here. This is it one of them hogs? Oh, uh, you got the sow. That's too bad. We're going to have to let her go. She won't come up. <laughs> Get on up here, baby. Come on. Look at that. Not giving an inch. Jeez. <laughs> Whoa, Whoa, yeah. the <laughs> Look at this fish. Oh, man. Look at that hog. Good God. Come on up here. Look, Look at that, that fish. Woo. Good oh, gosh. She was right here in the boat. Yeah, look at that fish. <laughs> what a fish, Bill. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Ah, somebody, what a fish. That's a nice job of looking at you there, too. Nice That's a fish. Lady. Look at that fish. Look at her. Look at that she fish. Just, she never really got excited about <laughs> no, that, did she? She did right kind of check back. <laughs> what a fish. I guess if I weighed that much, I wouldn't waste very much energy either. Are we putting her back, right, Bill? Oh, you bet. Look Please at that. Just give her a couple of swings and get her to go on her own. That's great. Now that's a pretty typical. That's typical for this large lake that's right a here. That's typical, this huh? Big one. Yes, sir. Well, I want to see the big ones then. If that's typical. <laughs> I don't know if I do want to. Well, that may be. That may be a typical big one. The big one. We lost one of these two-man boats one time. The big ones came up and got us on it. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, I took out two it's, fishermen. Yeah. That's, that's that big hole over in the water. Yeah, that was it. That's yeah. where he went down. <laughs> Oh, that's the fun of fishing. No, I like worm fishing. It's a, it's a, like I said, a nice relaxing way. Shoot, fly fishing's fun. It's all fun. Anytime you can lay one of these worms up in one of those little brush piles, you're going to do real well out here. How do you, what's the best secrets for fishing with the worm fishing, Bill? Well, on this particular place, it's what I just did. You just drop that worm right down in the middle. Right next to the brush. Pile like that. And just kind of jig it back and forth. And hit the bottom. We're using a split sinker on here. So that slip sinker on here. What we find is that the fish are hanging down at the base of these brush piles. They like structure. These bass like structure. That's real important to them. They feel secure around it. They can hide from other predators. Not that anything eats a bass here, I guess, except for the slight <laughs> alligator. Not the size there. of these bass are. <laughs> they probably eat the crows or the eagles when they land on the trees. <laughs> <laughs> we did have a. Uh, cormorant leg sticking out of a bass that we caught earlier this year. Is that right? Yeah. Our bass are pretty tough. 
when Coyote you're working, bass. when you're working a worm, what do you think is the best best way to work a worm? We're going to throw, cast it out next to the cover. Just oh, like I just bounce did. it along the, I just bounce it along the bottom. You know the way you've got it hooked up. You've got that tip cover, so it doesn't work out real right. bad. So just bounce it kind of along the bottom. If you get it over a limb or something, you just bounce it up over the top, and it just falls back down the bottom. And the bass like that. They look at it and say, whoa, that's a worm or a salamander <laughs> or a crawfish or whatever it is. Might turn him on. What most people probably don't understand, too, is they say that you fish a worm slow and then fish it about half as slow. Sure. So however slow you're working, you can always go about half, half as slow, nice and easy. See, using... The secret to worm fishing is patience. It's sort of like cane pole, cane pole fishing, only a lot more sophisticated. That's what I always say when I'm not catching fish. fish I always say that's what fishing is all about: is uh, out here just having patience, you know. <laughs> when I'm not catching fish, when I'm catching fish, it's the excitement. You can see here the way we work this, rig this worm up. Got the slip sinker in between, and what that does is actually gives the. Uh, it lets the, the worm, the uh, sinker will actually take the bottom sure. and let the worm come along behind it. It can work up. The worm is more free to float up into the water and work itself around. Oftentimes what we'll do in here also, Dave, is we'll just free fish without a white. We just won't even use a white. Now here in Texas, you guys call these tanks, right? Yes, sir. These are tanks. Uh, stock the, ponds, small lakes, whatever you want to call them. Not the kind we used in Germany. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not the kind we have in Germany. <laughs> See, watch this worm working the water here. Hey? Drop him in, just work him along. That green tip on him really works along good. Oh, yeah. We use a, a tequila-colored worm out here pretty well. Those particular worms are, are sort of dark blue or black with uh -huh. yellow tail. They work real well. Uh, we use purple worms. Yeah. I've All those different that. colors seem to work well. To tell you the truth, I'm not aficionado of a different color on worms. There he is. Yeah. What a guy. Get in on here. Come on in here, mama. Hey, give me a little fight there, right. honey. Woo-hoo. Get out of here. Take off. Nice take man. off. I haven't seen him. You see him? No. No. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, you know, we have two. Yeah, I, well, we're I sort of like catfish, too. I've yeah. never seen a catfish fight like this. <laughs> what? Look at that. How do you keep doing that? Where's yours at? <laughs> Come on back up here. Come on up here. Jump up. What's some big face fish in this tank, Bill? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got some. There good it ones. is. There it is. Looky there. Ah. What a fish. Nice fish. Isn't nice that gorgeous? Bass. It's good to what, four and a half, five pounder? Yes, sir. He's a good one. Definitely four. Not yeah. bad. Breeding stock for you guys. Yeah, he is. That's, uh, <laughs> that's first year spawn. Good fish. Hey, he was in good shape. He just bit my hand. <laughs> Still hungry. He wants more. <laughs> well, let's give it to him. All right. What do you think about tackle for these bass down here? What do you guys usually recommend in tanks like this? You get some... Oh, at different times of the year, it varies. You know, spinnerbaits tend to make them angry, tend to make them upset, and they'll hit a spinnerbait real quick. Uh -huh. We have a real heavy shad population here, so we use rattle traps, things along that line. Mm -hmm. They seem to work pretty well. Of course, the old faithful worms always, oh, sure. always around. Sure, the worms to get down deeper. Uh, our big lunker bass tend to hide a little bit deeper. Occasionally, we'll catch one on a spinner bait or a rattle trap or, or even a top water, something like that. But for yeah. the most part, it's, uh, it's worms. That's the way we work over our big okay. fish here. Well, these are, where do these tanks come from? Like, where, how is this form? You see a lot of debris and stuff, trees still in here. It was actually just a made the dam here. And... Yes, sir, that's, that's the way it's done. What we do is, we, uh, tank making in Texas is a, is a kind of an art. What you do is, first, you, you get a core area, uh, core out a, a, a pit uh -huh. along the drainage that you want to put the dam across. You put in a lot of heavy clay that you get which really acts as the base of the of the tank itself, and I then see. you line that that uh, foundation of the tank dam with the heavy clay, and then you put in the tank dam. Huh. And what's if everything's the done right, sir. What's the purpose of it besides catching big fish? Of uh, the tank dam, yeah. water, man, water. You know, Texas, the uh, saying in Texas you know, says the drought starts the day the the rain ends, <laughs> and that's about true. And we. We've, uh, yeah. we now say, we've been in a drought so long down here that we now say that we're one day closer to the end of it, and I sure <laughs> hope so. <laughs> but I can't see the end of it coming. That's good. 
Yeehaw, ride him, yeah. cowboy. Get that, get that boy in here. Yes, sir. Come on in. Let's talk about this. That's a nice baby bass. That one is breeders. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the problem. That's the problem you run into. <laughs> Get spoiled already. You catch a good two-pound bass. <laughs> One thing y'all saw me do that you ought to do each time before you pick up a bass, and that is wet your hand. They're covered with a little bit of slimy covering. You don't want to remove that slime. That's their protective coating. Notice how I lift the bass right here. I put my finger underneath his lower jaw, my top thumb under or inside of his lower jaw, and that paralyzes him more or less so that I can release him very gingerly, and he'll swim off just like that. And that's the whole nine yards. That's what you want to do. Put him back so he can. I can come back and catch him in the next year. <laughs> yeah, when you catch him, he'll be bigger, though. <laughs> that's the idea, right? Catch him yeah, next it year. Is. Yes, it is. There he is. There he is. Come on, you hole. Hey, come on up here. Dance for me, baby. Dance. You get one double. I don't know. Double, double. No, Don't miss. miss. I got mine right here. Come around the boat. Come on, lady. What is it? Ten pounds? Woohoo! Come on back here. Come on, come back. That reel is going out. Well, I'll play that fish now. Don't let him get away from me. All right. There he is. There he, there he is. There he is. Get him on there. All right. What was he? I didn't see him. I put the rep. All right, he's good. Coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. Look at him. Oh, what a hog. He's good fish, man. What a hog. Woohoo. Come back around here. Really? Hey, look at that hog. Oh, oh really? Nice. Woo. Look at nice that fish. fish. <laughs> nice. Love it. I love it. Here he is. Come on back up and do that again. How dare you? How dare you? Woo! Come on, swirl that water, baby. Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> I love it. There he is. Come up. <laughs> Man, that's a, look at this fish. That's a good fish. Woo! That's a real Woo! good look fish. Look at this fish. That's a real uh, good fish. Woo! Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Come on here, fella. What a hog. Nice fish. Look at that. Isn't that a nice? Isn't that that's beautiful? pretty. Isn't Woo! Or in cheap. What size fish you think that one's going to go? Man, that's six. That's a Maybe heavy one. Maybe six. Maybe seven. Woo! Maybe bigger. Yeah. Nice looking. Yee. May I? Yes, sir. Thank you. What? Save the cap! <laughs> right. Save the cap. Woo! <laughs>